imagine that behind the door of this exam room is a patient. Could be a male patient, could be a female patient. We'll know as soon as we walk in or even look at the patient's record. But just for the sake of illustration, let's imagine we want to determine, before we go in, whether the patient is male or female. What is the likelihood the patient is male? About 50%, right? Maybe a little less or a little more depending on our practice demographics, but that's close. Now, what if I told you the patient's name is Jane? What do you think now? Well, most people with the name of Jane are female, although there are male characters on Jane TV shows whose name is Jane. Jane ain't a girl. But let's say a patient with the name of Jane is about 99% likely to be female. Conversely, what if the patient's name is Glenn? Well, there's Glenn Close, who's female, but most Glens are male and our patient is most likely male. But what about Pat? Well, I'm an only child. Pat could be male or female, right? So if we start off just knowing there's a patient in the room, our odds of guessing their sex is about 50-50. Knowing their first name can help us narrow the odds, although some names are more helpful than others. That is the concept of Bayes' theorem. The idea behind Bayes' theorem is that probability of something, maleness or femaleness in this case, is affected by certain characteristics or conditions, which is why it's called conditional probability. As we will explain, Bayes' theorem comes into play every time we perform a diagnostic maneuver or interpret a laboratory test. Simply stated, it tells us the conditions before a test is performed affect the accuracy of the test.